In this video, we'll look at the command design pattern and see how it could be used in our case study application. Why do we need the command design pattern? Very often we're in a situation where a method in one class calls a method in another class. And that means that those two classes become tightly coupled. If you wish to reuse the calling class in a different application, you will need to take the second class, the one that is called, along with the calling class because they are tightly coupled. And so often it is desirable to reduce the coupling between two classes. In the example on the screen, we've got a method in the owner service class that is calling a method in the owner repository. And that means that owner service and owner repository are tightly coupled. One way of reducing the coupling is to make use of the command design pattern. Now this is the general structure of the command pattern and it looks a little bit complicated at first glance, but it's not too bad really. We have an interface called command that will define a set of methods. In this example, execute. There is a concrete command class that will implement this interface and it will do a job. Just focus on one job. That job will be done when the execute method is called. There's also a receiver, which will be the implementation of the job that is to be done. There is an invoker whose job is to call the execute method over in the command. And then there's the client for whom all of this work is done. Now, when we use a command pattern, what we're doing is decoupling the object that invokes the operation from the object that knows how to perform it. The pattern also allows us to combine commands into composite commands. That is a command that actually represents multiple commands. And the composite design pattern is another pattern that you might want to take a look at. This pattern also has the advantage of making it really easy to add a new command. If we wanted to have a second concrete command, then we can write that class. It will implement the same interface and it means that the invoker will not have to change. It just will be given in some appropriate way an object of the new concrete command and call its execute method. And so we are decoupling the client and the receiver. It's also possible, in fact, probably desirable to make use of a factory method to create the various command objects, because that serves to decouple the client even more from the command process. So here is an example for the pets case study that we looked at in learning block seven. Before using the command pattern, we had these two classes, owner service and owner repository. As we saw a few moments ago, the two are tightly coupled. If we introduce the command pattern, we end up with something that looks like this, which has a lot more classes. But now, as we can see, there is no direct dependency between these two classes. The owner service will have a dependency on the command factory and the command interface, but it no longer has a dependency on owner repository. So we have completely decoupled these two classes. Now in the adaptation of the command pattern that I'm using for the pets case study, I'm making the owner service both invoker and client. And so what it will do is use this factory method to create an object of this concrete command class, which is then passed back to the owner service and the owner service calls the execute method. When it does that, the execute method will go off to the owner repository, call find by email, return the result, and then that is returned to the client. Now, this example illustrates the concept of the command pattern, but it also shows us a couple of other things. It shows us that we will probably end up with a lot more classes, but that shouldn't be too much of a problem because each one of those classes becomes much more focused. It also means that the application becomes more extensible because we can add other commands in as implementations of the command interface 
we can update the command factory and then the owner service or indeed any other client can contact the command factory, ask for a given command by entering the correct command code and receive that command and call the execute method, all without any major changes at all to the existing classes. So I'll show you in the pets case study, this time for learning block nine, how the command pattern has been used. You'll notice also that as a result of the validation that we learned about in learning block eight, that there is a load of validation now being done in the case study. And I've also introduced a controller advice for handling exceptions. Instead of having the exception handling methods duplicated in each of the REST controllers. So let's take a look at that. This is the owner service class before we introduce the command pattern. Each of these methods does its own job and it has some code which includes tight coupling with the owner repository. And you'll see that that's happening down here and in here and in here and so on. So we have a lot of tight coupling from all of the methods in the owner service calling methods in the owner repository. If I introduce the command pattern, this is how the owner service changes. Each method now becomes something like this. Contact the command factory, ask it to create a command, passing in the code to tell that factory method which command we're wanting. That method returns a command object and we then call execute in that object. And those same lines are used over and over again in each of those methods in the owner service. And so you'll see then that the owner service has been greatly simplified. We've lost all the direct coupling with owner repository. And the same approach is now being taken in each of the methods, which means it's going to be easier to read, easier to debug and so on. The classes themselves in that same package have not changed. We've still got the same classes before and after, but there is an extra package now called command. In the command interface, I have declared values that represent the codes for the commands and a method called execute that is going to return an object. That gives me complete flexibility as to what I can return from the execute method when I write a concrete command class. Let's take a look at check credentials command, which is an implementation of the command interface. So it implements command. Here is the execute method, which is overriding that method in the command interface. It's going to return an owner. And this, when it is called, will contact the owner repository to find by email the requested owner. And if that owner exists and it has a password that is equal to the credentials that were given to this command object, then we have found the owner that matches the email and password that we were given in the credentials, in which case we can return that owner. Otherwise, we'll return null. And that's it. This is a really focused class. It's very small. It does one thing and it does it clearly. What about create owner? It also implements command and the execute method is going to return an owner and it will do everything that the owner service used to do, but that's now been taken out of the owner service and put into this create owner command class. Again, very focused. In the command factory, here is the factory method, which will be given a command code, which is one of these here, check credentials, create owner, etc. So I have chosen some names that are really meaningful so that we can read that code name and know exactly which command has been requested. And so in the factory method, the switch statement is going to look at this command code and if it is check credentials, it will create a new check credentials command, passing in all the parameters that are needed and then return it. Likewise with create owner, create a new create owner command object, passing in the parameters that are needed and then return it and so on. 
So the factory method has removed from the clients all details of command creation. So all the owner service has to do is to contact the command factory by calling that create method. That will return a command object of one type or another, and then we call the execute method. Now, if we wanted to add a new command, that's very easy to do. We just create a new class, give it a meaningful name, make it implement command, and then override the execute method so that it does the job that it should do, in this case, getting an owner. As I mentioned previously, this gives us a lot more classes, but look how small these classes are, how very focused these classes are, and that makes them much easier to read, much easier to maintain, and we can add in new commands without major upheaval of other parts of the application. I mentioned a few moments ago that I've also introduced exception handling. The way that I've done that is to remove from the REST controllers the exception handling methods, and I've put them into its own class, which I've called in this example, Pets Exception Handler, and it extends the response entity exception handler, and I've put in an annotation called controller advice. And that makes this class the handler for all exceptions that occur. I have overridden the handle method argument not valid method, which is going to deal with those situations where bean validation throws an exception. And I've also written the handle constraint violation exceptions. And these two methods are doing just what we had previously in the learning block eight. The effect of all of that is to behave in exactly the same way as it did before. And you can run the tests to verify that they all pass. And these are the same tests that were in the previous version of this case study. So we haven't changed the usability of the application at all. All we have done is refactor, that is to change the internal structure to make it more readable, more maintainable, and more extensible. And that is one of the great benefits of using design patterns in our applications.